I've been surfing the California coast for 30 years now. Seeing the impact of trash and lost gear on the fish and marine mammals is heartbreaking. Today, Ocean Beach is one of the cleanest beaches I know. When others see me picking up trash, they're usually inclined to do the same, or at least pack out what they pack in. Removing even small pieces of netting saves marine mammals, and I know these small gestures can make a big difference. To tell you the truth, there isn't much I don't like about it. Um, I like being on the ocean. I like uh, just being around a couple people working, not in an office. My name is Craig Goucher. I am a commercial crab fisherman at Trinidad. Have been here for a little more than 30 years. This is kind of like my home, I guess. So I have 500 traps. It takes me 10 loads to get those traps out. We set the gear, we set the 10 different loads, we set them all in different places. Because we're searching for where the main population of crabs is. We've been trying to improve on the collection of gear after the season has closed. Because there's always gear that gets lost. This is a picture of a big storm we had approximately 20 years ago in Trinidad. And maybe by looking at it, you can understand better why crab pots do move around and why they're not in position when we go back out to run the crab gear after the storm has subsided. This is one of the main factors why gear gets scattered around the ocean and it is basically lost for a while. And uh, that's what this project is about. I was approached by a person from Sea Dock Society to get this project underway to collect stray gear after the season is closed so that we can basically clean the ocean up when we're done working. Today we'll be, I think we will find some that are stuck and we'll need to pump. We have a, a pump mounted on the boat just for this operation. So that when we can't get one up, we can send the nozzle down and there's a lot of water that goes down the nozzle and it blows the sand away from the crab pot so we're able to retrieve it. Well, it's to our advantage. I mean, it's not just a responsibility, it's, it benefits us if we can maintain a healthy, healthy environment. This project is making a healthier ocean by removing all those lost crab pots from the ocean. And, and eventually, what we hope is that all the crab pots that are recovered are what pays for the retrieval through reimbursement from the fishermen who own the gear. They're getting their pot that's worth $200 back for $75 and they might be able to fish that pot for three, four or five more seasons. The fishermen are actually funding the retrieval program so that they can fund the program in future years. But ultimately, they're going to take this over and this is going to be their program. We want to minimize impacts to wildlife. Um, there's entanglement hazards. Ghost fishing can be an issue. We actually think with this project, we can clean the ocean from, it's about a 22 mile stretch from Redwood Creek to Mad River. With the help of sport fishermen, they locate them for us and give us the numbers. We'll go out in the morning with a whole bunch of numbers, GPS numbers that we can just go right to these pots and pick them up. It'll be very efficient. By the end of this month, Trinidad's gonna be clean. We typically have between 500 and 1,000 people come through our door every day, which translates to roughly one to two tons of fish that we purchase uh, every week. Every morning, uh, first thing that happens is uh, the fishmongers come, come through this door and to bring us in the, the freshest fish available. Fish do, in fact, have seasons, uh, just, like, just like produce does. 
uh, as we're approaching those seasons, we'll have a conversation with the fishmongers and they'll say, you know, we're expecting uh, the West Coast uh, Pacific albacore season to be starting soon. Buying fish seasonally is sustainable uh, for two reasons. One, uh, the method of catch, and that the patterns that, that fish travel di dictates what the best method is for catching them. Our process for purchasing sustainable seafood uh, starts with a conversation. Once that happens, I've had that conversation with the fishmongers, then I turn around and have the conversation with the chefs. Uh, one hook, one line equals one fish. And that's what we're looking for. The albacore tuna that we got in today was line caught. As the currents change in the summer, it, it becomes more available to us. Uh, during the summertime, the fish have come closer to the shore and uh, they can be caught with a hook and line. Um, has less bycatch and is a, a sustainable method. Uh, other times of the year, they are around, but they're much further away. And so they, they'll trawl for them and do quite a bit of destruction, uh, both in terms of the environment and the bycatch. From an environmental standpoint, obviously, you know, we, we do this because we care deeply for, uh, for the bays and for the oceans and, and the habitats from where the seafood's coming from. Um, but, you know, as well from a business standpoint, if, uh, if you're taking more than your fair share of any, any fish, then uh, you're not going to be in business much longer when there's no fish to be sold. When an average customer comes into a seafood restaurant, they should be prepared to ask a few questions about where their seafood's coming from. Ask how it was caught, where it was caught. If the server doesn't know, they should check in with the chef. And if the chef doesn't know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's an irresponsible fish, but it might be good impetus for the chef and the servers and maybe that customer to seek out additional information and learn a little bit more. Personally and professionally, I think that if we uh, make smarter decisions that are beyond just what we want at that exact moment, but what is going to be good for the long run, then everybody benefits.